The CCP regime can never be trusted. On the 27th of January 2019, a Chinese entrepreneur escaped from the Chinese mainland and arrived in San Francisco. With his arrival, a confidential document from the Chinese government was exposed. The confidential document clearly stated how Li Dongsheng, the former director of the 610 office, the so-called central government agency responsible for combating cults and handling cult-related issues, gave the direct command to conduct the persecution of Falun Gong. Who is Li Dongsheng? Li Dongsheng used to be the vice director of the CCTV. During his stay in position, he has introduced several CCTV beauty staff to Zhou Yongkang for sexual services. He soon became part of Zhou Yongkang's inner circle and was titled as the top pimp in Zhongnan Hai by the international media. Zhou Yongkang, the leader of the political legal committee, is also part of Jiang Zemin's inner circle. While Jiang Zemin started the persecution of Falun Gong in July 1999, Zhou Yongkang was the top man responsible for the implementation of the persecution. Li Dongsheng took charge of the 610 office at the same time. What is the 610 office? The 610 office was set up on the 10th of June 1999 during the time when Jiang Zemin was in power. The next year it changed its name to the Cult Busting Office of the Central Government. About 1,000 610 offices were embedded in the system from the local community to the provincial government. It was merged into the Political Legal Committee and the Ministry of Public Security by Xi Jinping in March 2018. A report from American think tank Jamestown Foundation in 2011 says 610 functions outside the state system without any official standing. Branches of the 610 office were created throughout China and a chain of command emerged. Closely linked to the political legal committee, the office's orders came directly from the party's top echelons, then trickled down to cities and neighbourhoods. Much of the structure overlaps with the CCP's political legal committee. The 610 office directly handles the implementation of the persecution of Falun Gong, including extrajudicial killing, torture, mental torture, sexual abuse and the illegal confiscation of property. The confidential document clearly stated that on the official visit to Liaoning, while examining the National Game Security, on the 19th of July 2013, Li Shen acted heavy-handed on Falun Gong by giving the command to intensify and work harder, dig deeper to find Falun Gong members, curb the rebound of Falun Gong. The confidential document specially mentioned that, in August of 2013, before the national game, there must be a strong hit on Falun Gong, by the means of centralised remediation, written in the document as, crack down on a group, destroy a group, dig deeper to find more groups, send a group to the re-education centre, transform more groups. Together with a confidential document, were two relevant documents. One is a document from the 610 office in Liaoning, which has the same date as the confidential document. The provincial document was handed in by Secretary Chi, requesting the approval of the political legal committee in Liaoning province, and it was signed and approved. Another one is signed by Pan Ligo, governor of Liaoning province. It stated the guarantee of the implementation of the persecution instructed by Li Dongsheng by applying the labour camp and all the other state apparatus sources to maintain a high pressure situation of tackling the transformation of Falun Gong. The escaped entrepreneur named Yu Ming used to be a successful businessman in Shenyang. Unfortunately, 12 years of his life were ruined in the prison and labour camp during the crackdown of Falun Gong, 
since he is a Falun Gong practitioner. Through a tough and incredible escape, Yu Ming fled out of China and arrived in San Francisco. He brought with him the confidential documents which are conclusive evidence and proof of the systematic persecution of Falun Gong. The confidential documents can not only prove the illegitimacy of the 610 office and the CCP regime, but also the mafia characteristic of the 610 office and the CCP regime. The political legal committee is the only superior over the 610 office in the time of Zhou Yongkang. It once became the second central government, which in fact headed over the central government of Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao. The confidential document shows at least three points. 1. The CCP has always claimed to guarantee justice. However, the evidence shows that the biggest inner ghost is the 610 office and the CCP itself, violating the constitution and law. The hierarchy of the persecution system illustrates that the 610 office has the power to merge all the state apparatus coherent in all system levels, especially the Public Security Bureau to manipulate justice as subtle as arranging a special court opening for Falun Gong practitioners. This is a testimony that the CCP can never be trusted for ruling the country according to law, as it has claimed. Two. The confidential documents also present how an internal system worked on persecuting Falun Gong. The troublemakers against the stability were actually those high-ranking officials provoking the incidents in the name of sensitive date. For example, the National Game Day, the Two Sessions Day, arresting people by indication and quota. Thus, the so-called troublemaking people do not really exist at all. Three. The confidential documents is also a testimony of proof that Li Dongsheng, the director of the 610 office, was the one who was directly promoting the persecution. Officials from Liaoning province all followed Li's instruction to execute the persecution. Mr Yu Ming, who carried out the confidential documents, is both the victim and the witness of the persecution. One of his stories was that he was kidnapped on the 29th of August 2013. When I got back to Shenyang from Xi'an, as soon as I got off the plane I did not stay in Shenyang, since I knew they would start the maintaining stability action. Whenever there will be Olympics, two sessions, National Day or May Day, they will take some action at this time, and I know they always do. So I went straight to Panjin. The child of my wife's sister was going to get married. I just went there to attend the wedding ceremony. On the exact date when I arrived in Panjin, the local security police came to my siblings' home at 10 o'clock at night to kidnap me. I felt something was wrong. After I escaped from the kidnapping, I searched online and found out that there were 300 people on the arrest list. Most were Falun Gong practitioners. But not only Falun Gong practitioners, also the people who went to petition, people who have their own faith, including the house church Christians, all were the object of suppression. Not wanting to be illegally arrested, neither accepting the persecution, as he was being transported to the prison, Mr Yu Ming released one hand from the handcuffs, then opened the window and jumped out of the running prison van. He rolled his body down to the ground and headed into a crop field, successfully escaping. After a lot of setbacks, twists and turns, he finally got the written evidence of the CCP persecuting Falun Gong. According to the report from American Think Tank, though Falun Gong remains the primary focus, its targets now include house church Christians, Buddhists and other religious spiritual groups and it has been renamed accordingly. Many human rights lawyers in mainland China criticise 610 as an illegal mafia organisation. Mr Yu Ming says although the 610 was merged and the political legal committee was degraded, it doesn't mean that it is not acting. In fact, the function was partly embedded in the political legal committee and partly embedded in the Ministry of Public Security. This also means that it has integrated 20 years of the accumulated experience of persecuting Falun Gong practitioners. As long as the CCP exists, the persecution will continue in various forms.